Welcome to the deep dive where we cut through the noise and uh, really get straight to the insights that matter. Today we're diving into something huge. The, well, the really strained state of modern healthcare. I mean, we're grappling with aging populations globally, more chronic diseases than ever, a serious shortage of healthcare professionals, and frankly, costs that just keep climbing. It feels unsustainable sometimes. Just to give you the number, the World Health Organization, they're projecting a global shortfall of, wait for it, 10 million health workers by 2030. And that hits low and middle income countries the hardest. It's a massive challenge. But, you know, amidst all this, there's a really powerful solution emerging, scalable too, and that's artificial intelligence. Specifically, we're looking at AI agents. These aren't just bits of code, they're, well, intelligent systems. Autonomous, they're designed to support clinicians, help patients, automate tasks, basically make healthcare work better, more efficient, accessible, and accurate. So today we're gonna unpack exactly what these AI agents are, the different kinds, what they're doing in the real world, and even uh, give you a practical look at how they're built, sort of your shortcut to getting up to speed on this critical area. Okay, let's unpack this. Okay, so let's start with a clear definition. What is an AI agent? Fundamentally, it's a software program. Sometimes it's combined with hardware, sure, but its core job is to perceive its environment sense what's going on, process data make decisions based on that data, and then crucially, take action to achieve specific goals. Now, what really makes them different from, say, standard software is how they work. They use machine learning, NLP, that's natural language processing and reasoning. This means they can adapt. They improve over time. They learn. If you think about their key traits, they're adjuncts. Autonomous, they operate on their own. Interactive, they can communicate. Goal-oriented, they have objectives. And adaptive, they learn and change. That adaptability point, it sounds powerful, obviously. But I guess the immediate question, especially in something as critical as healthcare, is trust, right? How do you trust an AI that's constantly learning, potentially changing how it behaves? That's a fundamental question, absolutely vital. And trust is built really through very rigorous testing, validation, and transparent design. We can circle back to that. Okay. But first, maybe it helps to think about them in categories based on complexity. Yeah, that makes sense. Like from the simplest to the most advanced. Exactly. So at the most basic level, you've got simple reflex agents. These are pretty straightforward. They react to things based only on predefined rules, like if X happens, do Y. A common example. A basic health chatbot answering FAQs. You type symptoms. It gives a pre-written answer based on that keyword. Simple stimulus response. Okay, basic rule following. What's the next step up? That would be model-based reflex agents. These are smarter because they maintain an internal model of the world, or at least the part relevant to them. So they don't just react to what they sense right now, but understand a bit about how things work, how their actions might change things. Think of a symptom checker app. It takes your input, sure, but it checks that against an internal model, a database of medical knowledge, disease patterns. It's understanding context. Right, so it has some memory or understanding of the state of things. Precisely. Then you have goal-based agents. Now, these agents don't just react or model the world. They actively try to achieve specific goals. They think ahead, consider the outcomes of different actions, and choose the path that leads to their goal. A really practical example is an AI scheduling system for clinics. Its goal is minimum patient wait time. So it looks at appointments, doctor availability, room usage, and optimizes the schedule dynamically to achieve that goal. Okay, that's becoming quite strategic. What's beyond that? Utility-based agents. These take it a step further. They don't just want to achieve a goal. They want to achieve the best possible outcome. They use what's called a utility function to evaluate how good different states or outcomes are. They aim to maximize utility or benefit. Think about AI in an emergency room triage setting. It's not just about scheduling. It's about prioritizing patients. It assesses severity, urgency, resource availability, and decides who needs critical care most to achieve the best overall patient outcome for the whole ER making value judgments. Wow, okay, that's complex decision-making. And the last type. The final category, and maybe the most powerful, is learning agents. These are designed to improve their own performance over time. They learn from experience, from new data, from the outcomes of their actions. They adapt their internal models, their decision-making processes. An AI diagnostic tool for reading scans is a perfect example. With every case it sees, every time its analysis is confirmed or corrected by a radiologist, it learns, it refines its algorithms, it gets better and better at detecting subtle signs of disease, mm -hmm. constantly evolving. 
It feels like seeing that progression from simple rules to continuous learning, it, it really highlights why these aren't just niche tools anymore. Is that why we're seeing such a push now? Why are they becoming so crucial for healthcare, like right now, beyond just making things run a bit smoother? I think we really are at a tipping point, yes. It's crucial because these agents are specifically being designed now to tackle those big challenges you mentioned earlier. They enhance patient outcomes directly. They provide vital support to overworked clinicians. They optimize entire health systems in ways that were, frankly, impossible before. They're becoming these intelligent assistants, almost like a force multiplier. Can you give a couple of really tangible examples where you see that impact today? Sure. Think about medication adherence, a huge problem. A virtual nurse agent can proactively remind patients, answer their questions about side effects, track if they've taken their meds. That directly improves health outcomes. Or take radiology again. An AI analyzing scans doesn't get tired. It can flag potential issues incredibly quickly, sometimes things a human eye might miss after a long shift. That means faster diagnoses, earlier treatment starts. These aren't theoretical benefits. They're delivering real improvements on the ground. It's fundamentally shifting parts of care delivery. Okay, so we've got the types, the reasons they're crucial. But I know what really gets people excited, and me included, are those applications that maybe fly under the radar a bit. The surprising ways AI agents are making a difference. Where are those aha moments happening? Yeah, there are some really fascinating applications emerging. One that's incredibly impactful is AI-driven clinical trial matching. Think about how hard it is to recruit for clinical trials, especially for rare diseases. It takes ages, costs a fortune. These AI agents can sift through mountains of anonymized patient records and complex trial criteria in seconds. They identify potentially suitable candidates with amazing precision. This doesn't just speed things up. It makes some trials possible that just wouldn't have been before. Right? Exactly. It unlocks research for conditions where finding enough patients felt like an insurmountable barrier. It's democratizing research in a way, especially for rare diseases. It's quite revolutionary. That is fascinating. Okay, what else? Well, building on the idea of proactive care, there's remote patient monitoring and early warning systems. This is huge. Imagine AI agents constantly analyzing data streams from wearable sensors, smartwatches, patches, or even sensors in the home. They're looking for subtle changes, early warning signs of serious problems like heart failure decompensation or sepsis, or even respiratory decline. Before the patient might even feel seriously ill. Potentially, yes. Or at the very first signs, the AI detects these patterns and sends real-time alerts to the patient's care team. This means timely intervention, maybe just a medication adjustment at home instead of a full-blown emergency room visit later. Wow, and you can just imagine the peace of mind that brings knowing there's a system kind of looking out for you. Mm -hmm. It's about keeping people safer and healthier in their own homes, reducing hospitalizations. It's a big shift towards preventative and predictive care. Okay, sticking with practicalities. Yeah. What about the paperwork? The admin burden in healthcare is legendary. Ah, uh, yes. Healthcare workflow automation. This is where AI agents can be lifesavers for staff. They can automate so many of those tedious, time-consuming administrative tasks. Think appointment scheduling, getting prior authorizations from insurance. Oh, prior authorizations, bane of everyone's existence. Right. Claims processing, patient follow-up reminders, AI can handle a lot of that. This frees up doctors, nurses, admin staff to focus on actual patient care, reduces burnout, and cuts down on errors too. Manual data entry is prone to mistakes. That makes total sense. Less burden, fewer errors. What about diagnostics again, but maybe in a more specific way? Yeah, related to the radiology point earlier, but with a twist. AI-powered medical imaging annotation for rare diseases. Radiologists are brilliant, but nobody can be an expert in every rare condition. There are thousands. AI agents trained on global data sets can help by highlighting very subtle patterns on scans, x-rays, MRI, CTs that might indicate a specific rare disease. Patterns a local radiologist might only see once or twice in their career, if ever. So it's like having a global expert consultation built into the system. In a way, yes. It leads to earlier, more accurate diagnoses for conditions that often go undiagnosed for years, causing immense suffering. It's a huge win for those patients. Okay, this next one sounds really futuristic. AI-driven nutrigenomics counseling. What's that about? It does sound futuristic, but it's happening. Nutrigenomics is about how your specific genes interact with nutrition. So these AI agents analyze your genetic profile, maybe your metabolic data from tests, lifestyle factors you input, and based on your unique biology, they offer personalized nutrition advice and plans. So way beyond generic 
dietary guidelines. Exactly. It's not eat less fat for everyone. It, based on your genes, you might benefit from more omega-3s or less processed meat to mitigate your specific risks. It's about tailoring prevention of chronic diseases like diabetes or heart disease down to the individual level based on their genetic predispositions. A truly personalized approach to health optimization. Incredible. Okay, I see synthetic patient data on our list. That sounds counterintuitive. Why create fake data? Right, synthetic patient data generation. It sounds odd, but it's incredibly useful and important for privacy. Training powerful AI models requires vast amounts of data, yeah. but using real patient data raises huge privacy concerns and regulatory hurdles. IPA, GDPR, right. all that. Precisely. So AI techniques can now generate artificial data sets that statistically mimic real patient populations, but contain no actual individual patient information. Mm. It looks and feels like real health data, same patterns, distributions, correlations, but it's completely synthetic. So you can train AI models, test new healthcare apps, do research. Without ever touching sensitive, real patient records. It accelerates innovation while safeguarding privacy. It's a really clever solution to a major bottleneck. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. What about supporting specific demographics, like older adults? Absolutely. Virtual health assistants for elderly care are becoming increasingly sophisticated. These are AI-powered companions, often accessible via smart speakers or tablets. They can provide companionship, just chatting, but also do daily health check-ins. How are you feeling today? Remind them to take medication, prompt them to stay active. Like a helpful check-in system. Yes, and more. Some can even detect changes in speech patterns or activity levels that might indicate early cognitive decline or even emotional distress like depression or loneliness. They can then flag this for family members or caregivers. It helps support independent living, enhances safety, and gives families peace of mind. That feels really important as populations age. Okay, one more application here, and it sounds critical for public health. Precision antimicrobial stewardship. Hugely critical. Antimicrobial resistance bacteria becoming resistant to antibiotics is a massive global threat. We're running out of effective antibiotics. A big part of the problem is overuse and misuse of the ones we have. Prescribing broad-spectrum antibiotics when a narrower one would do, or for the wrong duration. AI agents can help combat this. They analyze patient data symptoms, lab results, medical history, local resistance patterns, and they can recommend the most appropriate antibiotic, the correct dose, and the right duration, specifically for that patient in that infection. So guiding doctors to make better prescribing decisions. Exactly. Ensuring we use these precious resources responsibly. It's called antimicrobial stewardship, and AI provides precision support for it, helping preserve the effectiveness of antibiotics for the future. It's vital. Wow. Okay, so that's an incredible range of applications from the administrative right through to highly complex clinical and public health challenges. It really paints a picture. But what does it actually take to build one of these things? It's clearly not just, you know, a weekend coding project. It must involve a really thoughtful blend of medical knowledge and tech expertise. Oh, absolutely. It's a rigorous, multi-step process, not something you whip up quickly. It demands real discipline. So can you walk us through those key steps? If someone listening was thinking about de developing an AI agent for healthcare, what's the roadmap? Sure, let's break it down. Step one, and this is maybe the most crucial, define a clear objective. You can't just say, I want to build an AI for healthcare. What specific problem are you trying to solve? Is it patient-centric? Are you automating appointment scheduling? Assisting with diagnosis for a specific condition, monitoring vitals remotely for heart failure patients. You need a very clear, focused objective that guides everything else. Without that clarity, you'll likely fail. Right. Start with the why and the what. Makes sense. Then what? Then comes the data. Step two, gather and prepare quality healthcare data. AI is data hungry. You need relevant, high quality data sets. This could be EHRs, electronic health records. Which are notoriously messy sometimes. Exactly. So prepare is key. Cleaning the data, standardizing formats. It could also be medical images, survey results, wearable data. And absolutely critical here, you must ensure compliance with privacy regulations. IPA, GDPR, whatever applies. Anonymization, security, so non-negotiable. Bad or non-compliant data, sinks the project. Okay, objective defined, data sourced, and prepped. What's next? Choosing the tech. Precisely. Step three, select the appropriate AI techniques. The choice depends entirely on your objective. Are you looking for patterns or predicting risk? Machine learning, ML, is your go-to. Does the agent need to understand doctor's notes, patient messages, or talk to users? Then you need natural language processing, NLP, and probably large language models, LLMs. Like GPT-4 or those specialized medical ones like MedPolem. Exactly. 
models like MedPolM, BioGPT, or even adapted general ones like GPT-4, they're key for understanding complex medical language and powering conversations. And if you're dealing with scans or images, then computer vision, CV, is essential for analysis. Often you'll use a combination of these. Okay, so you've chosen your tools. Time to build. Time to build and train. Step four, develop and train the AI agent. This involves taking your prepared data, feeding it into your chosen models, and training them. It's iterative. You train, you test, you tweak. Techniques like cross-validation are used to make sure the model generalizes well and isn't just memorizing the training data. And if it's an interactive agent, like a chatbot or virtual assistant, this is where you design the conversation flow, the interface. Making it intuitive, maybe even empathetic, is really important for user adoption. Empathy and AI, interesting. Okay, it's trained, is it ready? Not even close. Step five is arguably the most critical in healthcare. Test and validate thoroughly. Rigor here is paramount. You need to test for accuracy, for safety, for bias, for reliability, and for compliance. This means testing on separate validation datasets it hasn't seen before, simulating real-world clinical scenarios, and crucially, user acceptance testing getting actual doctors, nurses, patients to use it and provide feedback. And I guess for some applications, this involves formal trials. Absolutely. If we link this back to trust, this painstaking validation is how you build it. For diagnostic or treatment support tools, you'll almost certainly need formal clinical trials and regulatory approval. Think FDA clearance in the U.S. or a CE mark in Europe. This is the gatekeeper step. You cannot skip or shortcut this in healthcare. Okay. Past validation, got the approvals, now deployment. No deployment. Step six. Deploy and integrate within healthcare systems. This isn't just clicking a switch. You need to integrate the AI agent smoothly with existing hospital systems. The HIS, the EHR, patient portals. Interoperability is key. Does it talk to the other software? And just as important, training the end users. Doctors, nurses, staff need to understand how it works, its limitations, how to use it effectively and safely. Good documentation and training are vital. Right. It needs to fit into the existing workflow, and is that the end? Definitely not. Healthcare never stands still. Step seven, monitor, maintain, and continuously improve. Once deployed, you have to monitor its performance constantly. Is it still accurate? Is it behaving as expected in the real world? You need to collect ongoing feedback from users. Update the models regularly with new data, new medical guidelines, new research. Medicine evolves, regulations change, so the AI has to evolve too. And critically, you need human oversight, especially for clinical decisions. The AI is a tool, an assistant, not the final authority. That human in the loop is essential. That makes complete sense. It's an ongoing life cycle, not a one-and-done project. So. Reflecting on all of this, the types, the amazing applications, the rigorous building process, it really feels like AI agents aren't some far off sci-fi concept anymore. They're here. What's maybe one example or piece of evidence that really hammers home their immediate measurable impact, something that shows they're enhancing efficiency, supporting decisions, personalizing care right now? I think radiology is a powerful, concrete example of that measurable difference today. A human radiologist might take, say, 20, 30 minutes, maybe longer for complex cases, to meticulously read an MRI or CT scan. An AI agent, appropriately trained and validated, can often process that same scan in literally minutes or even seconds sometimes. And it can flag potential anomalies, regions of interest, with remarkable precision. And that speed translates directly to that how? Faster diagnoses. Which means treatment can start sooner. It doesn't replace the radiologists. They still confirm findings, consider the whole, the whole clinical picture, but it dramatically speeds up their workflow and can act as a second pair of eyes. That's not future talk. That's happening in hospitals now. It's tangible improvement in the speed and potentially accuracy of critical decisions. A clear, measurable difference. And it seems inevitable that as the underlying AI tech keeps advancing, these agents are only going to get more capable, more integrated. Absolutely. More sophisticated, probably more accessible as costs come down, and just increasingly integral to how healthcare operates. It's fundamentally reshaping things. It really is. So as we wrap up this deep dive, here's something for you, our listener, to think about. Reflecting on all these incredible advancements we've discussed, what possibilities do you see? Maybe in your own healthcare journey or for the system as a whole, what specific health challenge do you think an AI agent could be uniquely positioned to solve? Definitely some food for thought there. Thank you so much for joining us on this deep dive.